Hello, everybody. It's nice to see as many people as that in the room. So Jane and I will have the honor to present, um, to give you an idea of all the works that we have been doing with quite a few critical people on the advocacy. And actually, we'll be not for, I mean, we won't follow the classical way. And I want to start by thanking specifically Global Health Vision, Kristen and James specifically for their support. So all the thing we're going to present here, it's us, them, and the group of critical partners that we are going to, to, to mention in this presentation. But I just really want, wanted to take the time on behalf of Jane and myself and our respective teams to acknowledge that and say that this is a critical support. Okay, so our presentation is divided in, in a few points. The, the idea is not to be super exhaustive. We won't have time. And as you may have seen, we do have a specif specific morning dedicated to the advocacy task team work. Feel free to join, even if you're not part of this task team. So actually, I'll start with that. You may remember last year at the same time, Philippe presented that. We had this slide with all of the recommendations from last year annual meeting. A part was dedicated to a broad, let's say, label that is financing and broadly communication and advocacy topics. There were three recommendations, if I'm not mistaken, for this specific piece. The first one was to structure a bit more our advocacy effort, because actually there was already an advocacy strategy existing. The second piece was to try to launch, initiate and develop an effort to better map the different technical and financial existing resources that we all, that well goes to the cholera uh, control uh, and prevention uh, strategy. And the third one was more at a country level. It was to involve more as much as possible relevant ministers beyond health, beyond WASH, but also finance and budget. So. I want to say that we have kind of make, made our homeworks, if we can say it this way, or started to do that. And so at the end of last year, an advocacy task team was launched and the primary goals of this task team is basically to discuss advocacy topics, I mean, policy topics, advocacy, communication and resource mobilization topics. Here you have an, an idea, a picture of the different institutions and members who are part of this advocacy task team. And of course, that being said, if there are any people who want to join after this meeting or in the coming days or months, please, please of course, feel free to reach out to us. As uh, you will see, there are the usual suspects, I would say, of the, of the task force. I'll spend a bit of time just talking about the first in-person meetings that we have been able to have with this task team. It happened in March. It does not mean that it was the first meeting that we had, but we used to have to, to meet virtually like everybody here. And I think I kind of feel, and I think it's shared that this in-person meeting was a very good opportunity for us to recreate a bit of link, because as you all know, and I'm not saying anything new, after two years of COVID, it has harmed a lot of our also relationship our strength as a partnership because our essence is to be to work together, to be a network of partners. So I would say it's not written on that slide, but the primary informal goal was really to recreate that link. The first of, well, the second, let's say, uh, formal objective was of course to refresh and refine the GTFCC strategy that is built around six key goals. I'm not gonna present them today, it's not the objective, but just to give you an idea. Then to build together, to build out a, a, a work plan to organize our respective activities and the way forward. The objective was also to provide a coordination mechanism to work jointly towards these jointly identified goals in select high burden countries. And finally, the idea was, all, of course, also to provide a coordination, coordination mechanism for planning key global but also regional advocacy and communication moments. So here, if, it's, if, if we want to build some kind of time frame, I would say that today we are between the blue and the orange piece. So 
the first one was the kind of setup of all of this, so end of last year. Then the whole task team group went through a work of refreshing the strategy that has been finalized on the occasion of these uh, meetings that happened in London. And in the blue circle, what you can see is all of the effort that has to be now developed into activities. So according to the work plans we have defined together. And of course, at the end, not meaning that it is equally the same amount of work because it is just basically the start. It's all of the work that has to be led at global and at country level in terms of uh, advocacy activities. And we're going to provide a few examples. And so I just want to spend a bit of time on the WHA side event that happened a month ago. I'm sure all of you have followed, but in case not, um, this side event, uh, it was the first time I think ever that we managed <laughs> to have the DG of WHO come and speak live uh, for cholera. And we need to acknowledge this because it's not such an easy task because there are many competing priorities, as you all know. And above all, I want to acknowledge the fact that we had six ministers of health in the room, literally recommitting for this fight against cholera um, and 10 countries participating in this meeting too. We, you can find, we have a press release and also an event recap on the website. The key message behind that was really to focus on the fact that we are initiating quite a lot of work with a lot of NCPs being developed, but now we also face challenges in terms of implementation. And now is the time to strengthen our efforts as we are approaching the 2030 landmark. We, if it works, we have, yes, we just selected a small part of one of our very, very important person who participated in the event, the president of Zambia, um, who has agreed a few weeks ago to become a cholera champion. It, and it's also the first time in cholera history that we have a president who agreed to become a champion and to lead our joint fight uh, at the highest possible level. Special thanks, however, go to the WHO Director General, who we have had the privilege of engaging on matters in the interest of public health. In our discussions, he asked that I consider taking up the role of Global Cholera Champion. Several consultative conversations have since taken place to generate the terms of reference for this crucial role. I am pleased, indeed pleased today, to accept the role of Global Cholera Champion. Hi everyone, so I'll be taking over from here and then Marion will continue to conclude our presentation later on. So my name is Jane, I am the Senior Officer of Resource Mobilization and Advocacy with the CSP. Coming back to um, the call to action since WHA happened, there were just three major things um, we, we wanted to highlight again. First being, of course, technical and financial assistance from partners is definitely needed for the implementation of the NCP in in uh, the countries. Second is investments by countries and partners in life-saving tools and surveillance improvements. I think these two have been touched earlier by both Philip and Thomas as well. And the third one is uh, funding for WASH itself. So going from our call to action to partners to the recommitment process itself, we, we are trying to maintain the momentum from the WHA side event and to further ensure robust partnership and collaboration. Um, so together with the Secretariat, with GHV and our whole team, we're in the process of asking partners to recommit to the task force, the advocacy task force itself. Of course, the caveat is that um, the process will occur in phases and partners have not yet been prompted to complete the full, uh, the full process itself. So this is going to take some time, but it's work in progress. And the components of the recommitment process itself includes four different things. So the first being the membership renewal. In that, you'll be able to see the declaration of interest. Second is partner mapping. This is also something both Philip and um, Thomas have highlighted. Um, from the key recommendations uh, from the annual meeting itself, it's really stated that a structured collaboration is needed. And with that, I think partnership mapping is the most important toolkit for us right now. 
and the uh, third being principles of engagement. So a little bit on future interactions and how we really want to coordinate uh, to have a coherent messaging. And the last one is the declaration to end cholera itself. So this is a declaration from 2017, but we really want to renew it and get everyone to recommit um, again. So there's a lot of work uh, for us. The next step is, of course, to continue engaging at a very high level, um, this meaning strategic advocacy discussions. We have been convening as the task team on a monthly basis, but due to WHA, we took a back seat for a while, but I'm very excited to meet the team again this week. Um, secondly, we want to expand the task team. So again, the call just now, the call to action was join us if you think you can support us. Uh, we really wish to leverage on everyone's expertise here. And the third, coordinating in-country and global advocacy and RM uh, efforts as needed, of course. Launching the advocacy task team work plan. So there's a lot of processes already in place, but to get to get it going, we need to launch the, the work itself. And finally, ensuring uh, partner engagement in activities. So that would mean um, things like drafting comms and advocacy toolkits, not just at a global level, but also at a country level. So speaking about the countries, um, I have to, of course, mention that a lot of uh, advocacy work has been done in CSP countries. So that will be Bangladesh, Zambia, Nigeria and DRC. Um, from the HQ, the CSP HQ in IFRC, we are assisting the teams in a lot of the resource mobilization processes. So not just mapping out donors, um, of course, also interacting with donors, donor stewardship, um, churning out or developing bi-monthly operational highlights. We don't have a full platform for communications per se. But what, what we do kind of leverage on is the GTFCC Twitter. And the other thing is our operational highlights. And I hope you guys are reading it on a bi monthly basis. Um, and also supporting country level advocacy. So not just stakeholder engagements, but a lot of the, I would say when we, when we have uh, country level workshops, what we try to push for is media engagements. And it really works because the momentum is high. You have important stakeholders in the room. You have ministers involved. Uh, you have um, uh, the, the um, key partners also at, um, at present at the event. So a lot of our, our post-workshop events have translated into good uh, comms and media materials. So online media have, have um, put out uh, some press releases. We've had um, coverages on TV and national news as well. And the other I would, I would want to touch on is uh, the advocacy workshop on acute watery diarrhea, uh, including cholera targeting at currently happening in all eight divisions in Bangladesh. So besides the workshop itself, this is also, uh, this is also taking place, but uh, specifically for Bangladesh. And these are some pictures from the workshops, media engagement, um, our engagements with NCDC, which is the second picture. The first one is our program manager from Zambia uh, meeting with some of the key partners um, within, the, within the country itself. And these are some of the processes which are already in place. So like I mentioned earlier, we've got the global donor mapping. We've got um, the resource mobilization strategy and, of course, the ops highlight itself. So one thing I wanted to touch on for resource mobilization, it's not just going out to get money, but how we want to fish for money. And that requires a lot of strategy. And that's exactly what we are doing. And during the workshop in countries, we are also trying to um, develop various toolkits and, and also uh, messages for the countries to kind of leverage on. Now, with all the work, um, what would be good is some visibility. And I'm very thankful that we can leverage on the Secretary General, the, the uh, GTFCC Secretariat's Twitter. That is our only official social media platform for now. But we are hoping to expand. And I know many of you in the room might have Twitter, might be following us, might not be following us. So if you're not, please do follow us. Um, our tweet handle is at SACGTFCC. OK, so I hope to see some follower increase today by end of today. Uh, but the objectives is really visibility, awareness of the work that we are doing. Um, Philip and Thomas were talking so much about the work behind the scenes, but also it is sometimes good 
not to just translate our work on 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 our website of press releases um, and so on. The in thing right now is social media, and being a millennial, I'm trying to push this internally. It's a challenge. We'll get there, and also partner commitment. So in my next slide, you'll be able to see some partners who have. Um, we have done a lot of the cholera activities uh, on field. They're tagging us. Um, we work together, you know, um, not just um, um, supporting um, for for technical for technical work, but also uh, funding and so on. So they do tag us. They give us good visibility. So it's a good it's a good momentum, and we are hoping we are hoping to uh, grow that uh, into a more global network. Uh, so content wise, I would say that a lot of the content. Uh, ranges from OCV training, our events, not only big key events, but also technical meetings. Um, what else? Our workshops and the, also the work on field uh, done by our donors and partners. So one thing I wanted to highlight was from WHA event, one of our tweet, um, not our tweet, but one of the one of our partner tweet, um, which we retweeted, got a lot of momentum, and that was uh, from the Honorable Minister uh, of Ethiopia, uh, Miss Leia, um, and we got almost eight thousand over impressions. Of course, everyone would be like, "What the hell is impressions, Jane?" <laughs> so it's basically views of our Twitter and this our tweet, and this is good because. That's exactly what we want to achieve. A little bit more visibility on the work we are doing. So that was a good um, th that that was a good tweet and a good momentum which I wanted to highlight. Of course, we've got important partners, Foundation Marriox, who's co who's constantly retweeting and also sharing uh, content on their own as well. Uh, Sandag, SDC, some of our partners from countries as well. So that's a little bit from me. I will hand it back to Marion to conclude the presentation. Well, it's going to be easy. It's very fast. We just tried to choose three words in terms of way forwards. Three words, easy to say, that we need to implement. So actually there is prioritization, coordination and implementation. And of course us alone, we can do small things, but just together I think we can we can really go through this and just wanted to tell you say again thank you to all of the people who have been involved in this because uh, I think we do feel that things are moving forward and it's I know it's a less for most of the people here it seems less technical than your own area of specialties but this is a work in itself and it's a big work and I acknowledge that not for myself but really for the people with who we are working on that before I hand the floor I'm, I promise it's going to be short just wanted to flag one important thing tomorrow morning and I'm sorry for those online it's for people who are here we have, you may have seen in the side meetings uh, agenda, we have two uh, sessions on investment cases. Those are really session made for any partners, but above all for countries too, to just go together through how basically to develop an investment case. And I know that quite a few of you here have entered this phase or are soon entering this phase of trying to reach to to leverage and to find monies to finance your plan, but not only. So just if you're interested to join, if you can either find Kristen, James, Melissa, Jane or myself and let us know. And otherwise it will be open for everybody. But just wanted to flag that for tomorrow morning. Over to you, Chair. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.